I would like to. This is Priya Asi yes. from Japan. He's the first time here in uh, Vrindavan. No, no, second time. Second time. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. No, for, for the first time, two, two years. Two years ago. Yes. yes. Oh, but, uh, wow. Two years ago, just okay. one week uh, stay here. So, and this time, two weeks. And he uh, was mercifully bringing also the new uh, uh, translated uh, commentaries of uh, Sri Jayananda yes. Maharaj. And uh, we have this now in English, yes. and it's a very beautiful thing. It will be now available for everybody. Yes. It's the Prema Bhakti Chandrika by Narottam Dasako. And Buddhist says it's the first book. Very wonderful to read for all beginners who want to enter into Raga Bhakti. So, we want to introduce this to you, and I want to ask uh, Radha Priya, uh, Radha Priya, no, Priya Das. Priya das. <laughs> he makes me, because he's so puggle, I become puggle when I am in his close association. <laughs> he is intoxicated by Radha Dasyam. So I want to ask you to share. We were yesterday at Radhakund oh. and how you how you felt and how you got inspired in your bhajan in your oh. meditation. Okay. So yeah, actually yesterday's Radhakunda Parikram is my first time uh, circulating around, and uh, I actually felt that uh, as if uh, that area my hometown. Wow. Yeah, and. Uh, when I stayed in the uh, rabbit, I think uh, uh, I I was floating as if uh, on the wave of fear. Wow. Yeah. So I think uh, I'm a actual child of Radara. Yeah. Wow. That is uh, my feeling yesterday, and so I was so overwhelmed still at the moment. So I cannot say any more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Thank you for yeah. sharing. And also, yeah, you know, this um, this is a Jayananda Maharaja in Japan. Uh, his commentary inside it, and also he uh, made very simple word, simple word in it, and also uh, adding his tremendously. Uh, Expertise. Mm. So this book is what reading. Jai Ho! Yeah, Jai Ho! I am looking forward to reading it. And I would like also to, to translate it in German language so that all the devotees from Germany can also have the, the deep connection to Srila Naratam Dastakwa, who was actually a very special personality. Mm. He was predicted by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come. And Mahaprabhu, he went once to take a bath in the Ganga. And at that spot, he had one ecstatic expression of prema. And he was calling, Naratam, Naratam, Naratam. And all the water became golden around him. And the devotees were standing and looking, thinking, Ah! What did he do? What did Chaitanya do? And then he said, very soon there will be one great personality, Narata. And I want you all to tell him, please take bath at that spot. Then all my prema will go in him. Yes. So Narata Madasa is, uh, was said that uh, he is a, a part of the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, this Prema Bhakti Chandurika uh, was ordered uh, by the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to write on the uh, Shri Ra Narottama Dasa. Then, the uh, first commentary from um, Vishubhanata Chakrabarti Pada, he is a disciple, disciples, disciples, disciples of Narottama Dasa. Then adding Ananta Das Babaji, yeah. his commentary. Uh, yeah, commentary yes. me. Then finally, uh, Shri Jayananda Das Maharaj input his expertise. So this Shri Shri Prema Bhakti Chandrika is becoming more sweet. Yes, so, yeah. because also Jayananda Maharaj yes. 
he got so much worship from Srila Prabhupada, from our Srila Gurudev Narayan Maharaj, and from our Gurudev Sadhu Maharaj. So yes. you can imagine this book has such a big love and feelings of Radha Dasyam inside, and it's adding up. It's not becoming less, it's becoming more. Because somehow, by the mercy of Srimati Radhika, she wants that disappear and that we can deepen our relationship to her through the mercy of Nara Sambasako and all those who are following and the footsteps of Manjari Ba. Jai Ho, thank Jai you. Ho. Thank you for sharing. Um, thank you. Priya Dasi. Yeah. It was a pleasure to be with you here in Vrindavan. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, we are leaving tonight, but so I'm very happy to to have this uh, association yes. here and to to share today with you. Thank you so much, Thank Vida. you so much. Yes, and uh, yes, give my big hug to also China yes. Maharaj when yes. you meet him again and ask him sure. that to bless us also. We can follow in his footsteps. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Rade, Rade. Rade, Rade. 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 So. Now I would like to ask anybody of you to share. Can you say some words and say Radhe Radhe? Because now I can see your faces, but I don't know if uh, everybody is uh, ready to to share any about anything today. We want to do it spontaneously. Dada Mai, I see you. Radhe Radhe, my Didi. So How beautiful. You, I'm very happy to see you. So beautiful, shining. Oh. <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> Radhe. 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 Um, I I think my mama. My dear, I think my mother. Uh, she she would like to share about her painting, like Gurudev said. Uh, but I I'm sure she would like that Gurudev also is uh, is uh, watching. Um, so maybe she can do a bit later. Somebody can do before. Gurudev, he is listening. He is listening. Acha. Maybe we can tell that uh, yesterday night, uh, Radhe Radhe, uh, <laughs> Raja Bhaiya had uh, the Raja Bhaiya had a successful uh, surgery yesterday in the U.S. and so Gurudev was whole night with him and praying, praying and not sleeping until he got the news that the operation went well and he came out from the operation theater. So that's why today Gurudev is a bit requesting. Uh, to rest and uh, to see if, if we have done our homework. He's listening. He's listening in a relaxed mood and he wants that we are sharing our hearts, but he's with us. Yeah, so please, uh, Makalatika, can you uh, start sharing about your painting? Maybe some, just okay, five now. minutes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, Bajan. Thank you, Suniti. <laughs> yes, I prepare. I'm now in my gallery, and I prepare some talk about um, my my work about my meditation. But maybe we we um, do this on Saturday because uh, I think that is is most important that I show what I paint is connect with uh, something what I want to say. Maybe, I think maybe it's a great idea that we move these things because uh, it's idea is that we see what I talk. It's sharing, it's sharing needs, need this, yes. Can you take yeah. one of your paintings maybe on your app and then explain this to us? Because uh, if I can share something, uh, I she prepares. She wants to show everything to Guru Dev. This is something she really wants to do from beginning to the end, like a like her story. And she was really like a eager to show 
to show uh, all the big paintings. This is her yeah. opportunity. No. So she's asking kindly. Yeah. We can do it Saturday, little. Yes, 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 no problem. So okay, yeah. then I will Mar ask uh, all the international mm -hmm. dasis. Who who else would like to share something? Where's my Govinda Mohini? Thank you. Radhe Radhe. Ich habe äh, gefragt in die Gruppe, Corinna Mohini wollte auch scheren, aber irgendwie ist sie irgendwie da, wenn ich danach sie frage. <lacht> ja. Oh, Mahabab, you are there. Oh, her phone died. Battery is off. Okay. Mm. Ocho. Okay, thank you, Nandarani. Thank you. I saw this. Please don't be shy, everyone. Godavani, maybe you want to share. I would like to hear from you. You are always so deep in all your meditation. What is listening? I would like to listen to you, to your feelings. What is going on right now for you? What is your, where are you in your heart? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. my dears. Wow. So many. So many we can see. Okay. So. So very spontaneous. I just wanted to share. One one playtime with uh, with Narutam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, and his disciple, one disciple from Narutam Das Thakur. Like we were reading or we were presenting that book from Narutam Das Thakur, it is such a special personality, and he had such a special disciple. And his name, disciple's name of Narutam Dasthakur was Ramachandra. And uh, Srinivas Acharya, he sent the always was mentioning that name wherever he went. So you can see that relation, that relation between the devotee is is uh, it can be also from a family, expanding family. Like in that case, Srinivasacharya and Narutam Dasthakur, they were known, and Shamananda Pandit, they were known as the second expansion of Mahaprabhu. The first expansion are the six Goswamis, and the second expansion is Narutam Dasthakur, Srinivas Acharya and Shyamananda Pandit. Though they had in between a beautiful relation, there was not, we are from this family, you are from this family. No, it's one family. And this is called the Gaudiya Vaishnava. This is the love family. So we all belong together and we all help each other. And in this case, it was a very, very nice incident. Uh, Srinivas Acharya was sitting at home with his whole family. And uh, 
They were talking normally everything. And suddenly, Srinivasacharya fainted. And everybody was, ah, what happened? What happened? The whole family was totally nervous. And they were thinking, what happened with our Srinivas? What happened with our Srinivas? My God, what happened? And uh, nobody really understood what happened because they tried to motivate him, motivate him to talk something or something. It was nothing, nothing. It was just totally in Samadhi. First you had that true Anusmriti and then he went to Samadhi totally. And then they don't know what to do, how to, to get him back to consciousness and how to wake him up and how, but they knew that his most beloved associate is a disciple of Narutam Dastakur. And they called for him. So after a while, Amachanda Pandit came and he was greeting the family and hugging everybody. And they were asking him things, what he did and that, this and that. And he was sharing his experience. He was sitting next to, right there, next to Srinivasacharya. And then he also left suddenly. And now they said, what's happening? Now they are both, they're gone. What happens? How, what can we do? What can we do? But actually they were in their total samadhi. They were embracing each other in their sita there. And what happened is they went back because Radha, Brother Rani, in a special playtime in the water, she lost her bangles in the water. And, uh, and Ramachandra immediately felt what did Srinivasacharya, his beloved friend. He immediately felt it, so he went to help him to find that bangles in the water. And then when he found his, and they were together looking for them, not actually Srinivasacharya in his sita there, but Ramachandra in his sita there, he found the bangles under the stone in the water. And then he gave it to, to Srinivasacharya in his sita there, and he gave it back to Radha. And then immediately, a wonder happened. And uh, Srinivasacharya came back to, uh, to his consciousness, to his Sadakya consciousness. And, oh, wow, he's back, he's back. Ramachandra, he was not back, but he was back. So they were asking him what happened. And he told about the playtime, what he had in the spiritual world. When he was meeting his beloved Ramachandra. And then when he, after a while he was talking and then he said, and he said why, why he didn't come back yet? Why he didn't come back yet? Now, wait a moment, he also will come. So then after he came and he was, they were sitting next to each other and they were only praising and laughing and exchanging and sharing and all this, what they experienced. So actually this is a very beautiful playtime and it is not very, 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 it's happening all the time. Right now, it's happening. All of these playtimes are happening right now because they are not from time and space. They are beyond time and space. They are not limited. And uh, if Radharani is our ultimate goal, then these pastimes immediately enter into our heart. I think I heard that past, I don't know how many years ago, but it's still present. So what happens is, it's not that we are 
that this is far away, everything. No, it's very near, it's very close by. And in Brema Bhakti Chantrika, Narutam Das Thakur is explaining a lot of a lot of things about that very intense, intense love and um, when we share that our our feelings and our exchanges and our experience from each other that helps us to bring our mind on one place. It is like when we chant mantras, that's also happening. When we really chant mantras and we are here now and we right present in the mantra, that immediately connects you with what you are uh, praying for, you can say. Like the name is not different from the name. And uh, in this case, all these playtimes and these wonderful experiences for that uh, beautiful uh, inspirations and souls have, it's happening. And I want to share something more what yesterday happened. I felt like when we were all meeting, a, a whole group meeting in the Radha Kunda, and uh, we were bathing in the Radha Kunda, and then after we were talking a little bit our experience, and many said, "Oh, I really got tired." So. Guru is always telling something when one one body, the Sadak the external body, starts to be tired and starts to be sleeping, the other body, our Sita there, awakens. So in a bath of Radakunda, this is actually happening. Our Sadak there is going to sleep and our Sita there awakens. And that is the right moment and the right moment in the here and now. That is happening in the path of Radha Kunda. And we were so nicely, was it, when when we were meeting, we, uh, we went with one group, and Kopinat went with another group, and we met in the middle, in the middle of the Radha Kunda. I saw Kopinat and we swam each other, so like embracing in the middle of Radha Kunda, and that was like, wow. You just have to drown and stay underwater, that's it. That would be the place where you belong to. So Narutam this Thakwa in Prema Bhakti Chantrika is very much explaining about that deep prema, about that deep exchange on our on our level, on our real relation. Our real relations uh, are actually not from this world. The real relation is in our constitutional position, that relation to each other. Actually, this is the real wonderful relation. And now we can just talk with that describing in Prima Bhakti Chandrika. Many places. It's a big book like this here and there. Yeah. That is what I felt now to share with you spontaneously. My feelings I offer to you with a hard embrace for everybody and yeah, Radha Radha. Thank you so much. And somebody else, please welcome. I don't want to extend any longer. Radhe Radhe. Jai Jai Si Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Our life is Radha. Radha Rani is my life. Radha Rani is my life. We are Devi. Yes. Hmm? Yes. 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 Somebody is there to who want to share something now?
oke okay. <laughs> so seems to be the day where we speak about narutam das thakur <clears throat> one of the greatest vaishnavas in our tradition And I remember many years ago, Gurudev told me once, Gora Chandra, you know, you should go more deep in the songs of Narottam Das Thakur and Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And what I feel, the songs of Narottam Das Thakur, they are mostly always in mood of separation and the yearning and desperation. Actually, is also little my mood for doing kirtan. I'm not very happy kirtan singer. My kirtan always little melancholic. So, Narottam Das Thakur, he never met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. At the same time, it is said that when Mahaprabhu disappeared, then Narottam Das, he took birth. So he listened about Mahaprabhu, but he never met him personally. So his feelings of separation from Mahaprabhu are so strong. And for him, it was also not easy to go away from home. He was also like Raghunath Das Goswami, kind of a prince, no? very aristocratic family. The parents, they had different plans for him to maintain the kingdom and become the successor. But Already from childhood, everybody could recognize that he is a very uh, spiritual person. And he received the frame from Mahaprabhu by taking bath in the Patmavati River. As Suniti explained before, Mahaprabhu stored the frame there and ask to Patmavati river to give it to Naruta. He will come. But the goddess Patmavati is also one of the branches of the Ganga in the delta of Bengal. Nowadays, this place where Naruta appears in Bangladesh. So the goddess Patmavati, she appeared, she asking to Mahaprabhu how I can recognize him. And Mahaprabhu said, when he will come close to you, your waves, they will swell up for it. And I think two and a half years ago, like February, 2019, I had chance to visit the place where Narottam Das Thakur uh, appeared. I had to leave India because of visa issues, you have to go out and then come back. So that time I decided to go to Bangladesh. Before I went to Mayapur, first time, 
in my life and had a beautiful um, retreat with Krishna Chandra Prabhu and devotees from Switzerland. And then I went to the border and took the bus and very adventurous, very exciting because Bangladesh is full Muslim country, 90% Muslim there and already border visa issues and why you are coming here, they are asking about tourism. Yeah? So, the place where Narottam Das Thakur took birth is called today Prem Thali. And there's a tree under which it was close to the river under which Narottam, when he entered the water, he got, got the frame of Mahaprabhu. And there was a big flood then in the village and everybody was excited. When Narottam came out from taking bath, he was a completely different person. His bodily luster changed into golden. He was only crying, bathing in his own tears. All people thought he became mad. What happened to him? Something special. And then nearby there's the birthplace where his parents uh, lived. Nowadays was destroyed. In the 1975 there was a war between, I think, Pakistan and Bangladesh. So some things got destroyed, but the original deity of the family of Narottam Das Thakur is still there. It's the Lakshmi Narayan deity. And I visited also the tree under which <laughs> Narottam Das Thakur, he wrote his Prema Bhakti Chandrita. <clears throat> so, I felt very blessed to go there and to pray there that the mood of Narottam Das Thakur can come in my heart. That is what we need, the longing and feeling of separation is like a magnet that pulls us closer to our beloved Ishtadev, Radharani, Mahaprabhu. And here in Vrindavan, outside of Radha Mohan Temple, Mungya Mandir, I don't have much places where I like to go. But I like very much in Vrindavan Radha Gokulananda temple. Here's the Pushpa Samadhi of Narottam Das Thakur. There is no real Samadhi of Narottam Das Thakur because he left the body in very special way. He entered into the Ganga and he not came back. His body just disappeared. Nobody could bring him out or Gurudev left the body, something. He went into Ganga and disappeared. So there is a Samadhi in Gopulananda temple. Samadhi of Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur is also there, who commented on the scriptures of Narottam Das and others. There is also the Govardhan Shila 
that Mahaprabhu gave to Raghunath Das Goswami. And there's also the original Mahaprabhu deity that Narottam Das Thakur worshipped. So I imagine the prema of Narottam Das Thakur when he worshipped this deity, then he had direct darshan of Mahaprabhu. So this temple is very special. It is near Radha Raman temple, but nobody is going there. Some old Matajis and some Prabhus living there, maintaining the service. Sometimes some devotees coming, maybe in Kartik, some groups coming also, but usually it's very empty. And nearby is Radha Raman, everybody going Radha Raman. Big groups, everyone going there, very famous. So I'm thinking sometimes that the words of Srila Narayan Maharaj that the path of Raga Bhakti is narrow. It's not for tourism, it's not for groups, it's not for big amount of people. So maybe that can explain why this temple always empty, <laughs> nobody is going there. But I think it's most important temple in Vrindavan for what we aspire for. So. Yeah. Srila Narottam Das Thakur Ki Jai Ho. Jai Ho. Govinda, you wrote in the chat, Govinda just said, would you like to share something? <laughs> okay, then my husband called us under the trouble. He will speak something of his heart. Dandavats, my sisters, all over the world. Only some uh, something from the Holy Dam. We are so fortunate to be here for our good if and our Swamini. The speak back means not all these shards and clothes which Suniti got in the Neubazar. <laughs> the big bag means a, a full bag of unbelievable experiences here in this short time and of unbelievable blessings we got in this few days. So I cannot speak about it all, but maybe for example yesterday we was on Radha Kun 
And uh, I was many times before on the other one. And you know, there is mainly a lot of crowd. So many people bathing there. And yesterday we was with, together with Bhagavati there. I don't know, did you speak about this? No? Yeah, and uh, she was, uh, she went with us to many hidden places also. But then the, the highlight was that we could enter in the Atakun and we could feel really this embracing of Radhika. And just as we jumped in, another Manjari came from the other side. It was a big one, I tell you, but a Manjari. <laughs> and it was so sweet, really was a god sister of us and the whole radakun was there was only we three four persons and the flowers was on the top of the radakun this water was golden shining it was warm nicely covered the whole body and it was a soft water you can not imagine this softness of Swamini when she embraces us it was such a joy a joyful experience and we all could feel her presence there It was very intense. And so I can tell you, this is only one small thing. We were so welcome also by all the church Parsis who live there. They all welcome us with open arms and warm hearts. All these hidden places all these not so hidden places like the place of Srila Raghunathas Goswami, where they always, the whole day, 24 hours doing kirtan. These old bodies, you know, everybody who was there, there were so many very old devotees, no? sadhus. They are doing kirtan and many other. Bhajan, but you can feel in this old, old bodies, there are young, young girls inside, really. They are so soft. And if you come there and sit and sing together, you are, in the same moment you are in with our Raghunathas who is all the time there. So close to Ratakun, our place. It's so nice here. And today we have to leave, but the bag is full, really. Like this size, but not only one, no, we have to four. <laughs> Radhe Radhe. Thank you so much. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Jai Jagatam. Is it okay um, for me to read something?
It's some beautiful pastime of Srimati Radhika. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> One second. This is called Radharani Takes Sanyas. <clears throat> One day, while sitting in Yavat, Srimati Radharani had the desire to meet Shamasundar Krishna. So she sent Saki Chandramukhi to Krishna with a message. Some discussion took place and it was agreed that they would meet at Bokul Kunj in Vrindavan and Krishna sent Amala, a garland, back with a messenger that very happily gave it to Srimati Radharani. The Saki... Translation, baby. What? Thank you, thank you. The translators, maybe they need you to speak a little bit slow. Oh, okay, okay. Should I begin again then? Oui, bonjour. <laughs> okay. Actually, this was um, a pastime given by one of Shilin Reinraj's disciples uh, on a Zoom conference called Radha Tattva. That was uh, Tridandi Maharaj. And one of my friends got the manuscript, got it written down. So um, it's just so beautiful. So one day while sitting in Yavat, Shumati Radharani had the desire to meet Shamasunda Krishna. And she sent her messenger, Chandramukhi, to Krishna with a message. Some discussion took place and it was agreed that they would meet at Bokul Kunj in Vrindavan. So Krishna sent a garland back with the messenger and she very happily gave it to Srimati Radharani. The Sakis then began to decorate Radharani to meet with Krishna. This is the mood of the, of the Manjari when they serve Srimati Radhika and they dress and decorate <clears throat> to please Krishna. We are thinking, when we are dressing our deities, we are thinking we are decorating Radharani so she can meet with Krishna and she can give pleasure to Krishna. So this is a very wonderful meditation. The Sakis began to decorate Radharani for the meeting. They put beautiful garlands around her neck. They put flowers around her hair. And they prepared different kinds of food stuff, which they put in golden containers. Then, at about 10 o'clock at night, Radharani was ready to go and meet Krishna. Just when she was heading out, her so-called husband, Abhimanyu, arrived there, and he came in the house. I'm hungry, and my friend Govardhan Malik, also the husband of Chandravali, and my friend, my Bandhu, he is also very hungry. So... Mother Jatila, she called for Radharani and said, you have to cook. She was supposed to go only with Krishna, but Radharani has to cook. She was in a big dilemma, so she thought, anyway, I will cook as quick as I can, and I will go very quickly to meet with Sham. So meanwhile, Krishna, he arrived at Bokokunj by himself. And he looks around and Radharani was not there. Always Radharani arrives first, before Krishna generally. But this time Krishna arrived first. Anyway, Krishna thought to himself, she will come soon. In the meantime, I will do something special for her today. I never do this. I will clean the kunj. I will sweep the kunj very nicely. And started, he started to make flower garlands 
and started to make beautiful decorations in the kunj. He made a gateway out of flowers. He made a bed of flowers with a canopy over it. And the flowers there were pictures of different personalities, different Gandharvas. The most astonishing flower decorations that you can imagine. Krishna is working so hard. Meanwhile, he's wondering, what's going on? Where is Radharani? Maybe she has forgotten. Meanwhile, back in Yavat, Shimati Radharani is in great anxiety. What's going to happen? I'm supposed to meet with Krishna. Finally, Krishna decided he's going to search for Radharani in different kunjas. He went to Radhakund. He went to Shamakund. He went to Vankshivat. So many different places. Meanwhile, in the heart of Shamasunda, a great feeling of separation was rising. Radhe, Radhe, oh, where is Radha? Then Krishna came back to the kunj and saw that Radharani was still not there. Little slowly. Okay. Little. So should I stop after each sentence? For the translators, yeah? Little. Okay. At that time, Krishna became disgusted. Why am I doing this? Women are Maya. This is the source of all my problems, Krishna said. I've been bitten by a poisonous snake the poisonous snake of love. And although I'm dying in this po poison, I'm still alive. <clears throat> I thought this love would make me happy. I thought this love would bring me happiness, but all it's brought is terrible unhappiness and a burning pain. Krishna decided... This love is Maya. It's nonsense. Women are nonsense. Simply, they cause big problems. So much unhappiness. So now I'm going to become a brahmachari. From now on, I won't see the faces of any women. And Krishna very angrily began to break all the beautiful decorations that he made in that kunj. Meanwhile, in Yava, Radharani was so very worried. What's going on with Krishna? What is he thinking? Radha couldn't, couldn't leave because her mother-in-law kept her in the house. So she sent one of the Sakis, please go and speak to Shama Sundar and see if everything is okay. So that Saki went to Bokul Kunj and she found Krishna was not there. Instead, she saw, oh, somebody decorated the Kunj in such an amazing way. But someone came and broke all the decorations. So she went back and she told Srimati Radhika what happened. Meanwhile, Krishna went home and he went straight to bed. In the next morning, Mother Yashoda, like she does every morning, she came to wake up Gopal. One of the first things that Mother Yashoda does in the morning, she opens the curtains so that the golden rays of the sunshine will come in the room. Krishna likes this very much. Does anyone know why Krishna likes the gold rays of the sunshine? I'll ask all of you. Because it reminds him of... Radharani. Yes. 
They remind him of Shimati Radharani. Yes, it reminds him of Radharani. <clears throat> but this morning was different. When Mother Yashoda went in, she started opening the curtains, and Krishna said, No, close the curtains, Mother. I don't feel good. <clears throat> Mother Yashoda said, But Gopal, what's wrong? I don't feel well. I'm going to stay in bed. <clears throat> Mother Yashoda said, Let me get you dressed. <clears throat> she brought the golden dhoti, which Krishna loves. Why does Krishna love to wear golden dhoti? Because it reminds him of Shimati Radharani. And Krishna said, no. Today, Krishna said, I will wear Balaram's blue cloth. Mother Yashoda said, okay. Mother Yashoda started to put golden rings <clears throat> and bangles on Krishna. And Krishna said, no, mother, don't you know everything gold is bad? Everything golden people, especially golden people. Krishna said, I don't want to see anything golden. Everything golden is bad. Mother Yashoda said, Gopal, how are you going to go out to herd the cows? The sun is golden. Krishna said, I won't look at it. Mother Yashoda said, what about you? You have a gold picture frame inside your room. You have your parrot inside a golden cage. Krishna said, I will paint them black. Mother, everything gold is bad. And golden people are very, very bad. Mother Yashoda told Nanda Maharaj, Go and milk the cows. Gopal is not feeling well. And milk the best cows and bring some of that milk. And I will make something for our Gopal. Meanwhile, Srimati Radhika sent a messenger to meet with Krishna. And that messenger came in a secret entrance in Krishna's room in Nandagam making sure that Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, no one could see. As soon as the Saki messenger from Radha came into the room, Krishna, mm, Krishna covered his eyes and looked away. She said, Radharani sent me to see how much pain you've suffered last night. Krishna would not say anything. He turned his head away. So this Saki went back to Radharani and made a report. And everyone in Yavat became sad. Everyone in Braj became sad. Everyone in the universe became sad. Because when Radha and Krishna are united, everyone is full of joy and happiness. But when they are set separated, everyone becomes very depressed. Very sad. So Purnamasi and Dhanishta and others are trying to break Krishna's sulkiness. They went to him and they tried to speak with him. They said, Radha. And he said, hey, don't say that word. It is a bad word. I don't want to hear that name. But she loves you. Hey, I won't speak with you again. Get out from here. But they came and they said, Krishna, you should learn some philosophy. You know it is in Vishnu Purana, Aradhananam, Aradhanam Sarve, in a sneaky way, speaking some verses with the name of Radha. Krishna put his fingers in his ears. Go away. Don't speak that name in front of me. Very bad person. I won't hear her name anymore. Meanwhile, Shimati Radharani gets up from bed and she cooks so many nice things for Krishna. And she went and she sent them with Dhanishta, who brought those things, and Krishna pushed them away. Krishna would not try any of it. He didn't take anything cooked, only a little milk from Mother Yashoda. Very hard to refuse from Mother Yashoda. 
like it is difficult to refuse if a mother is offering something. And he would not speak to any of Radharani's messengers. So understanding that Krishna was fasting, Shumati Radharani also began to fast because Radharani, she eats only after Krishna eats. She takes Krishna Uchista, Krishna's remnants. And when Krishna started fasting, Radharani's heart broke in grief and the poison of separation was damaging both Radha and Krishna. The Sakis, they suggested, finally they were talking among themselves. We have to do something. Now our Radharani is not eating. So they came to Radharani and they said, they had a plan. Radha, we have to do something. Just like before, that rascal Krishna, he promised to meet you in the Kunj, and he didn't show up until the next morning. And when he came, he said, oh, I had to kill some demons. We look at him, and you said, what's the lipstick on your face? Very bad. You don't have the decency to take a bath before coming to see me, with all the signs of being with another woman. And we told him, Praveshni said, Chalo, get out. Entrance is forbidden. You can't come in this kunj. But then Krishna decorated himself. He disguised himself in the form of a woman to come and break your man. So in the same way, you have to take a dress of a Brahmin, Vairagi, a sannyasi. So Lalita took Radharani to a lonely place. She took off her blue sari and put on a saffron lungi. They put a Harinam chada on top of her head, and she tied something tightly around Radharani's breasts. They made a top knot on Radharani's hair. They put big beads around her neck and some tilak on her forehead. They gave her a kamandalu water pot. They gave her a a begging bag, and Radharani became a sannyasi, and she set out on the road from Yavat to Nandagam. And while she was walking, she was chanting in a very sweet voice. Om Namo Narayana, Om Namo Narayana. And, amazing thing, whoever saw that sannyasi, they became mad. People started crying, just seeing the beauty of that sannyasi. Some people came to the sannyasi and said, let me give you some donation. Other people were following the sannyasi, asking, please give me initiation. Never saw such a wonderful sannyasi like you. So finally, that sannyasi arrived at the home of Nanda Maharaj, and the gatekeeper asked her, Why you came here? What do you need? The sannyasi said, I am a beggar, and I've come here looking for alms, for charity. You please go inside and tell them. But tell them I have made a particular vow. I am a very strict sannyasi. So Mother Yashoda heard that there is a sannyasi at the door. She came running. She gave something. No, I'm a very strict sannyasi. I only accept charity from brahmacharis. Mother Yashoda said, oh, my Gopal is a brahmachari now. He told me that women are maya. He won't look at any women anymore. Now he has become a brahmachari. So Mother Yashoda called for Gopal. Come, there's a very effulgent sannyasi. I think you would like this sannyasi. Just by looking at this sannyasi, I feel so happy. You should see this sannyasi. Gopal said, I don't want to see anyone. Mother Yashoda said, Gopal, this sannyasi is so effulgent. If we don't give some alms to this sannyasi, 
he may curse us and some uh, inauspicious thing may happen. So Krishna said, okay, mother. And Krishna saw, oh, such a nice sannyasi. Krishna could not recognize the sannyasi. But I've never seen such a beautiful sannyasi. Krishna immediately became happy. For many days, he was unhappy. Suddenly, he was feeling some happiness. Krishna said, Oh, beautiful Brahman, what kind of charity do you want? And the sannyasi Brahman said, I have a particular vow. I will ask for something, but first you have to promise that you have to agree to give whatever I ask. Krishna said, you don't have to say that. I'm the son of Nanda Maharaj, the king of Braj. Whatever you want, I will give you. If I can fulfill it, I will go. If I cannot fulfill it, I will go to hell. Now tell me, what do you want? That sannyasi Brahman smiled. I am the daughter of the king of Varshana, and all I want is your love. And Krishna began to cry. And Srimati Radharani began to cry. And Krishna said, Radhe, what are you doing? You have come here and you are so thin. You have not, not been eating. You dressed like a sannyasi and came to my house like this. You have been suffering so much. This makes my heart break. Radha said, no, I've not suffered personally. When I heard about your grief, I became very restless. But now I've seen your moonlike face. All my unhappiness is gone, and I feel extreme happiness. Krishna went to Mother Yashoda and said, Ma, this sannyasi is a vairagi and has no place to stay. It's late at night. Maybe this sannyasi can stay in my room tonight? Mother Yashoda said, oh, yes, very good, Kopal. Maybe he can train me. A brahmachari wants to be trained by a sannyasi. In this way, Shimati Radhika took sannyas. And finally, Radha and Krishna are reunited at the end of this pastime. There is a benediction that whoever hears this pastime will get love of Radha and Krishna and all anxieties will go away. Shimati, Shimati Radhika ki jai. <laughs> Oh, oh, beautiful, Jagatama. Wow. Thank you. Wonderful. I wanted Atul Krishna to read that because he's the one who heard it and shared it with us, but he's not yes. here, and I, I couldn't help but share it with you. It's just so beautiful. Very touching, very beautiful, Lila. And um, so Gurudev is also was listening the entire time and um, uh, yeah, very inspiring to hear uh, from our dear brothers and sisters, Suniti Didi, Gora Sundar, Raghunath Bhaiya, Gora Chandra and uh, Jagatama. And I think we, we would also like to um, conclude uh, today's, uh, our first uh, or the second international Radha Dasyam sharing. And today it was spontaneously about Narodham Das Thakur and also Radha Kund, and uh, one thing which came to me in, in Prima Bhakti Chandrika, which is very striking to me, is just, uh, you know, that Narodana Thakur is showing us the path, how to follow Rupa Raghunath in his songs, in his pratna, and he very much loves and appreciates, you know, the songs of uh, Narodana Das Thakur. But he not only shows us how to do our sadhana and follow in our sadhak they are Rupa and Raghunath, but also as manjaris. And there is a very beautiful um, pastime Leela described in Prima Bhakti Chandrika. I think it's in the very beginning also when it's about Guru Vandana, that um, Radharani is sitting on a, on a, on a palanquin, there are the manjaris. And then she, with her sidelong glances, she spots, she spots uh, one beautiful manjari, and she asks Rupa, Rupa, who is this beautiful manjari there? And Rupa says, 
this Manjulali Manjuri, she brought her. And then Manjulali Manjuri is uh, Lokanatha Goswami, uh, Guru of Narottam Das Thakur. So here also Narottam Das Thakur shows the path how to be, be a Manjuri is always to follow in the footsteps of Guru Manjuri who introduces us to Rupa and Rupa introduces us to Brother Rani. So uh, I think we're all very blessed that we can uh, relish and feel the songs and the writings of Notandas Thakur. And we'd like to uh, devote one uh, bhajan now at the end, which is very dear to our Guru Dev, uh, Guranga Boli Tehave. And uh, I think our Suniti Didi. I'd uh, like to ask her to, if we can uh, do this kirtan uh, as a conclusion and also Suniti and Gora Sundar are leaving today, so it has a very um, strange feeling because now we have been so happy to have them and we hope that now they open the doors for all of you to come. Gora Sundar, as you know, is a very strong guy, so he broke the doors open to India. So we hear something that most like probably soon they will open also visas again. Jai ho! So be alert, you know, and be ready. Be ready. Be 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 Don't be tourists, as uh, Gora Chandra Bhaiya said. <laughs> said. Don't think we are no tourists. We're not tourists. Be, let's be students. Students. So we, we sing one, uh, one last uh, bhajan. And um, yeah, thank you so much, all of you, for joining. And uh, yeah. Then we will see each other anyway in the, on Friday again. Let's do a bhajan. You know, you know that feeling like they are still here, uh, Suniti and Gaurasunda, and we already feel separation. Wow. Same time. Same time, huh? This is, uh, they're still here. So, wow. And, and also, all of you must come one day to join and exchange and share here it's so beautiful in life no i mean technology is also one thing but it's just a emergency situation <laughs> So lovely to be in Vrindavan after a long time after two years it seems like eternity and uh, but now I said to Gurudev also to come back and be here again. It seems like nothing has ever been different. <laughs> which page is it? Uh, it is page 86 in this book. 86. So the crying, longing, the prayer full of longing. By when will the hair on my body stand on end upon chanting Goranga? And Gurudeva always says, when? When I know that it's Radhika, together with her beloved in one person, then the hairs will stand on end. When will my eyes overflow with tears upon chanting Hari Hari? When I feel that is Radhika, longing for her beloved. Oh, 